you, Rebecca and Natalia, for inviting me to share the good news about food with the Wild Women Wellness community. This is the first of four in a series about building a strong immune system with plants. I'm Rebecca Johnson, a health supportive chef specializing in plant-based living. From food to beauty to activism, my mission is to teach the benefits of and how to prepare plant-based or better known vegan foods for a better body, clearer mind, more compassion, and a thriving planet. You can find me on the web at Plant Rich Life. So, what is the immune system? The body has 11 main systems that function to keep us well. Some have two that coincide. Just as the renal and urinary system work together, so does the immune and lymphatic system. Both systems defend the body against harmful diseases. The immune system is a network of vessels that carry a clear fluid called lymph. Lymph nodes act as filters that monitor harmful substances throughout the body. When that function breaks down, the immune system is in danger. I like to think of my immune system as an army of protectors that keep the enemy armies out. It's my defense. And just as a government builds a security force to protect nations, I am responsible for building my own security to keep my body functioning well. I am responsible for building my own security to keep my body functioning well. Food choices I make either fortify or weaken my body's boundaries. It's up to me to protect my body from outside invaders, such as bacteria, viruses, fungi, and toxins. Protecting my organs and my cells is how I work together with my immune system to stay well. Illness can be caused by DNA damage, so repairing DNA is the way to repair our health. There are books you can read by physicians like Dr. William Lee's book called Eat to Beat Disease, The New Science of How Your Body Can Heal Itself, and the neuroscientist Dr. Caroline Leaf, who is the creator of the Switch app. Both of them talk about DNA repair in the body and the mind. They've studied and teach at length about telomeres. Telomeres are a form of DNA defense and repair. They are caps on the end of DNA strands that keep the DNA from shortening and unraveling. Kind of like a shoelace. Telomerase is an enzyme that continually repairs telomeres. Smoking, stress, poor sleep, an unhealthy diet, and lack of exercise damage your telomeres. There's so much more science about how lifestyle can harm the systems of the body that are meant to protect us from disease. It's worth studying if you want a better understanding. I'm not a scientist, I'm a chef and a coach, but I think that's enough of a foundation to make a case for eating foods that maintain and repair health, not damage it. A basic formula that is highly publicized is to support health by eating foods that are high in antioxidants. These antioxidant foods prevent free radicals in the body from causing oxidation. There is something called oxidative stress, which is linked to cancer, vision loss, heart disease, arthritis, stroke, respiratory disease, aging, obesity, hair loss, memory loss, and immune deficiency. So assisting our immune system in staying strong should be at the top of our self-care list. To be specific about what can build our immune system, let's focus on the four organs that are linked to it. The thymus gland, the lymph nodes, the spleen, and the lymphatic vessels. Antioxidant foods that are good for the thymus gland include beta carotene. The word itself has one of the foods that are rich in it, carrots. So that's pretty easy, but it's the color that is the telltale like other orange-hued foods, like sweet potatoes, winter squash, cantaloupes, and apricots. There are two green ones too, spinach and kale, which are also rich in beta carotene. Now, moving on to foods that help increase lymphatic flow, 
The top of the list is leafy green vegetables. Low sugar fruits like lemons, limes, melons, and berries, flax and chia seeds, avocados, garlic, Brazil nuts, almonds, walnuts, and cranberries. Many more like herbs such as cilantro, parsley, echinacea, and golden seal. Foods that strengthen the spleen are sesame, pumpkin, or sunflower seeds, legumes, kidney beans, figs, coconuts, grapes, cherries, dates, potatoes, sweet potatoes, brown rice, oats, ginger, and spring onions. You can see with this small list of foods that have a variety of vitamins and minerals, all of which address protecting the immune system and its organs are plant-based. If you eat more plants, you're doing more to support your immune system. My mission is to highlight the science behind plant-based living and to share with women in this community how to get more plants on your plate and in your body for better health. The body is really a self-healing machine. If you give it what it needs, it'll function the way it's supposed to. Plant-based diet is meant to assist and support what other healing modalities you may be using. I'll be talking about recipes in each video, but for this one, I wanna focus on squash. Squash is my favorite fall food. Remember, it's got lots of fiber, it's got that color, it's got vitamins including A, C, E, and B, along with minerals such as calcium, magnesium, and zinc. So it's great for your skin, it's great for your bones, it is a high antioxidant. There's some simple ways I wanna share how you can get more squash into your diet. The easiest way to do that is to buy the squash pre-cut. So here I have large diced butternut squash. I have salt, pepper, olive oil, and sage. And I'm simply gonna season it and put it in the oven to roast. Although this looks the same as the other, it's not. This recipe is salt, cinnamon, and nutmeg. But it's the same technique. I'm going to roast it in the oven. But in this case, I'm going to cut. I am using a serrated knife as squashes tend to be hard and I'm cutting along the long way. I'm just working my way all the way around. The flesh inside is much softer. I just need to get through the tougher exterior. So I cut off the top and then I'm cutting all the way through to open and have my squash. Now the hard part is over. I just need to scoop out the veins and the seeds inside. And now there it is. My squash is ready to be peeled and cut. Next, I'm going to peel the skin from the squash, peeling down to the inner yellow flesh. Sometimes there's green and a white layer in between, and we're just going to cut all of that away. So I'm going to slice this half of the squash in wedges. But that's done. I'm gonna take my wedges, and I am going to batons or sticks, and I'm going to take those sticks, and I'm gonna lay them out, and I'm gonna cut them once more because I want the sticks to be more narrow. I am making medium-sized dice. I lay them all together and just cut across in order to make my dice. And these will be ready for storing in the refrigerator until you're ready to use them. They can be frozen, they can be seasoned, they can be dropped into a soup. Here we have my wedges, which is quarter of my squash. As I said, I like to use my squash for multiple things since it was so big. I've even taken part of my squash 
And I made squash noodles. These are great because they cook very quickly. You can blanch them in hot boiling water. You can just put a sauce over them in a pan. It's like spaghetti. Now that I've cut my squash and I have my baking dish, I'm going to line them up. I've already seasoned them with oil and herbs, a little salt and pepper. I'm just gonna lay them around. This is a great side dish. As you can see, my oven is at 350 because I'm baking my squash. If I were going to roast my squash, which you can do on a sheet pan, you would have it at 400 or above to give it that brown flavorful crust, which we like on the outside of our food. I've covered the pan, which is also a method for baking. If I were roasting, I would leave the pan uncovered. My cheesy baked squash with garlic and sage is ready to eat. Squash was perfectly baked at 350 for 25 minutes. Not too soft, but tender. This baked squash is cooked perfectly. It's tender, but not too soft. This recipe is a curried lentil with squash. First, I start by grating ginger. You want it small and fine because ginger is very powerful. I've already diced my onions. Now I'm going to add minced garlic. I'm using a garlic press because I want the garlic also to be very fine. So I have my ginger, grated, diced onions, minced garlic, and chopped spring onions. I heat up two teaspoons of olive oil and I start to saute my onions, then my garlic, then the ginger, and I keep the scallions for my garnish. After my onions, garlic, and ginger cooked down, I add my spices. Heating up the spices brings such a great aroma that the entire house smells delicious. Now into my onion and curry mixture, I add my lentils, tomato paste, mix that well, and vegetable broth. The ultimate ingredient which makes this curry so delicious is coconut milk. It also balances the spice of the curry. Then I add a little cheese this is the vegan portion of the recipe because this recipe calls for cheese, but I'm not going to use dairy. So now I'm sprinkling in nutritional yeast to give it that flavor of cheese. Because it's gonna take a little while for my, my curry to cook, because it's gonna take a little while for my curry to cook, the last thing I put in is my squash. I've also added a little cauliflower for texture. After I put in my squash and my cauliflower, I put on the top and I let it steep for about 20 to 25 minutes. Here's my butternut squash red lentil curry. My final step is to garnish it with chopped spring onions. And for texture, I added chopped cashews. We're really not as defenseless as it may seem as it pertains to contracting disease. The immune system is in charge of protecting us from bacteria, viruses, and parasites 
that live in our daily environment. It's just that too many of them are not good for us. So these defense mechanisms in our body prevent the entrance of pathogens or eliminate them when they have already entered our organism. I'm Rebecca Johnson, and I look forward to engaging with the community more about plant-based eating and living. I'd love to connect with you on the web at Plant Rich Life. Be well.